tall rough prepared for the big jump. It would be about 15 stories straight down. There was absolutely no margin for error. Everyone watching was worried, especially Paul's own brother, Frank. The way the cliff was, was situated, it just didn't look like perfect conditions. And when you're dealing with something that, that could affect your life, I think it should be perfect. I remember hearing him, he kind of let out a yelp like he knew he was coming up short. And then uh, he hit. By the end of his life, Paul Ruff was a world-class athlete. But this is how his family prefers to remember him. As a scrappy, competitive, outgoing kid. Second youngest in a big Boston family, eight brothers and sisters, one of his earliest stunts led to his first serious fall. He was coming down the banister on a Saturday morning, and uh, over he went, and Mother and I were still up in bed. We hadn't gotten up yet, but we heard this thud. We heard this guy uh, break the leg, and it was uh, one of those spiral breaks, and it was, it was quite a break. The leg healed, and Paul grew into a handsome young man. His love for skiing took him to Lake Tahoe, where he developed a reputation as an extreme skier. Extreme skiers are the daredevils of the slope, out to push the envelope. They ski unmarked trails where most skiers would never think of going. For them, there is no out of bounds. To see him just floating off of there and doing different maneuvers and making it look so easy, it was just it's like uh, poetry in motion. Paul got so good, he became a movie star, appearing in a string of popular ski films like this one called Extreme Skiing. While the cameras were rolling, he even set a world record for this 110-foot vertical jump. When it comes to jumping, whether it's 20, 30, 60, or 110 feet, everything is calculated to perfection. The takeoff, the air time, the landing, the run out, so that we can go off with a calculated confidence that there's no way we'll get hurt. Because dying is not much of a living, boy. But in 1991, Paul Ruff's record was broken by another skier who jumped 145 feet. Paul was determined to recapture the record. Just six months before he was supposed to get married, he assembled a team of friends and photographers to help him. It would be the man against the mountain, a hair-raising 160-foot drop into the unknown. As his friends and his brother waited, Paul went about the business of carving out a small trail to the edge of the precipice. He couldn't see where he was jumping to. He had to be actually off the end of the cliff and in midair before he could e even get any sense of direction as to where he was jumping to, which I don't think anybody else in this world would have wanted to jump that way. I don't think Paul wanted to jump that way, but that's the way it was. Finally, everything was ready. It was time. From the top of the cliff, with everybody around, he yells, Jimbo, tell me you love me. And I, I yelled back over to him, not here in front of everyone, Polly. That was one of the last moments that I remember. Then, Paul Ruff jumped. At the last minute before he took off, he made a quick change in his direction to the left. I really think that at the last minute, he didn't feel right about skiing on the path that he had carved out. And I think he just thought at the last minute, let me try this way. It looked like the backs of his skis hit the rocks, which threw his balance out of whack. About two-thirds of the way down, the air that's underneath the skis starts to push the skis back up. That's when he hit. At that point, you had so much, so much chills going through your body, kind of like right now, um, that you know everything just kind of froze there for a few minutes. A rescue team sprang into action. At first, Paul's friends thought he might be all right. He was so strong that he was fighting us off and saying, let me go, I want to get up and walk away. Because he, had, he was determined that he was going to walk away from this jump. But he was not going to walk away. He had suffered massive internal injuries. Paul Ruff died before the medevac helicopter could take him off the mountain. His friend, Jim Matthews, the man who held him while he died, will never forget. I'd love to have him back, but it's one of those things where you had to back him. You couldn't grab him by the back of his hair and say, no, don't do this, because he would have done it somewhere else without you being able to be involved. 
Last spring, after the snow cleared, Frank Ruff and a handful of his brother's friends retraced Paul's final footsteps. They placed a hand-carved cross at the top of the cliff. On it are the words, Paul Ruff, King of the Hill. At one point in time, I had wished Paul would have just looked over the jump, looked over the cliff, and said, it doesn't feel right, it's too big, the pieces aren't falling into place, let's just all go home and, and have a beer. Because if he had done that, we'd, we'd still have it. Our salute to Paul's spirit of adventure.